All right, so we finally got there again, Pearl Rank. Uh, this time we did it with Ethne, and basically what I'm doing, um, two seasons ago, I did it with Gurnacora from start to finish. Last season was with Calvate from start to finish. This time I said, you know what, let's do it with Ethne the whole way. So I had a deck guide up prior to this called Death Flow, which was essentially was just a lot of Death Blow mechanics that helped me get from rank five to rank uh, two, all the way closer to one. Uh, and then it kind of sputtered out. It just wasn't quite kicking it the way I wanted it to. So we made some changes, and this is the deck that took me from rank one to rank uh, pro rank rank zero with some um, some you know confidence. Uh, I did lose some uh, some games, but I won a lot more than I did usually. With the proper tech choices that I made for this particular run, it got me from rank uh, one to zero um, pretty pretty e not easily. That's not the word, but relatively comfortably so i'm going to show you the deck and give you a little bit of the breakdown and then hopefully maybe this is what uh, uh can help you get over that hump as well here is death flow pro so this is a different take on a deck list that i had uh posted and made a guide for uh maybe about a week or two ago called death flow um now that list capitalized on death blow mechanics death blow mechanics obviously have really high payoffs for very specific criteria with damage done now with ethne you can really surgically place the damage and really capitalize on those high ceiling value cards that have death blow mechanics things like hengate's sword and gregoire etc now as we approached rank two and got into rank one though it wasn't as clear cut and easy to really capitalize on those cards. Uh, so what we did was we made a little bit of changes here for the pro version. And this one really pushed us through to pro rank with a little bit more ease and reliability. Now I'm gonna go through the card list and I'll tell you a little bit about the strategy and the card choices. So we're gonna go through this real quick. All righty, so we start off with two Dwarven Agitators, your standard uh, Sheldon deposit cards. I've got two Dryad Fledglings. Again, these are cards that can kind of act as engines in their own right and demand removal. Two Vriad Dragoons, standard four provision movement. Broccolon Sentinels, good thinning piece, as well as some direct damage to combine with your Ethne charges. Two Dryad Matrons. Now these are new to the list. Uh, these are engine pieces that can really capitalize and uh, snowball in terms of point generation. These usually, uh, demand an answer from your opponent, be it a lock or a removal or some type of card in that regard. So uh, next I have two Dolblathana Sentries. These are also great to complement the Matrons. Now when all these are kind of put together and flowing at a high rate, that is excellent passive point generation. This deck has kind of taken away from a deal damage uh, kind of point generation piece more towards an engine uh, mechanic. I've got a Crushing Trap. Um, for long round punishment. I have two Hawker Smugglers, again, cards that require uh, a response or tend to get out of hand and can be capitalized on. I have Milva. Milva, again, uh, is another good card. Immune, grows out of control. Karen for lock and row movement. I have Triant Boar. Here's uh, another card that has sort of made it back in and out of the deck many times and finally has uh, come back to the list and I'll make some explanations as to why. Uh, Moran, another lock and two uh, two pings of damage as well. I've got Sheldon Skaggs, obviously. This is a staple as uh, just real big removal. Good place to, uh, to to crush some pretty big cards, things like Arnolf, things like big monsters, etc. You'll always find a home for these points. I have Gabor. Gabor's in here as well. Uh, again, carryover or round three immunity. I have some, say, Synthesis, again, points that can't be messed with. Uh, the immunity tag on this is going to give you a lot of option to really uh, either absorb some points from your uh, cards like your uh, Hawker Smugglers, and these points will not be touched. Now, again, there's always the possibility of a Curse of Corruption or a Scorch, but if it happens, it happens. Uh, I've got Ithlene, another 11 provision uh, staple. You want to put these cards, uh, these points typically into Sheldon, but you don't want to over deposit into Sheldon. Uh, here's a new one, Ragnarud. Now, this is part of the... Uh, the whole gambit of wearing your opponent down in long rounds. Now, prior to this, the death blow uh, deck that I was playing typically had um, issues with being bled. So the build for it, while I was being bled a lot, 
was that you'll get a lot of more value off for card to card with your death blow uh, bonuses versus uh, opponents who preferred longer rounds. Because in, in from rank five to two, I wasn't finding that people were going for long rounds. They typically would usually play five to six cards deep into round two. Sometimes they'd bleed you out in round, uh, sorry, in round one. In round two, they'd bleed you out a bit, and then usually you're not getting much value for engine pieces. In this case, it's a different story. I found that a lot of people wanted longer rounds. So I said, screw it, let's go with 12 points of Ragnarug. If you wanna go down and play eight to nine cards in round uh, three, we're gonna get some value off this. It's gonna cause some problems. So that's why I have some Ragnarug in here as well. And finally, Great Oak. Great Oak is just a great finisher. Again, surgically place those points here, there, whatever. Remove what you need to remove. Sometimes you just wanna direct three damage. I'm very much um, for using this card in a deep round one to take the round, uh, mainly because it, this, this card typically obviously gets a lot worse uh, in shorter rounds. So if you can really capitalize on a, you know, 14 point uh, Great Oak, you know, don't leave that opportunity on the table if it means winning a round on even or winning a round when you know you absolutely need last say. All right, there's the list. Now, the basic strategy of this is generally that in round one, you want to be overwhelming your opponent with uh, targets that require uh, immediate action. So, um, Things like the uh, the the double matron, double Dolblathana, Once these start doing the dryad shuffle and generating a crap ton of points, the passive on this is enormous. You're going to be generating so many passive points based on this that are either going to uh, pull out something like the, uh, your opponent's locks, your opponent's uh, hard removal, things like cleaver, things like big uh, damage dealers like. Um, um, uh, your opponent's potential Sheldon Skaggs, your opponent's Geralt, etc. That's fine. It's totally fine. In round one, you want to be uh, you want to be squeezing out a lot of your opponent's response cards, uh, so that you're you're gonna have a freer go with other cards that have engines such as your um, your Triant Boar or uh, your Hawker Smugglers, etc. You can pick and choose kind of how you want to do it. Depends on how you mulligan. If you find both Hawker Smugglers in round one, play those and get those removed if necessary. They're not the end of the world. What you're trying to do is you're trying to overwhelm your opponent with targets that require answers. Targets that are going to eat up locks and real hard big removal so that you're not going to get um, eaten, in, uh, eaten by in later rounds. You want those cards to get uh, dealt with early buy bigger cards so that your value in later rounds are better. Uh, now, typically, if you're playing Dolbo Thana Sentry, uh, you're gonna throw down a Triant Boar, you're gonna throw down your Dryad Matrons. There's a lot of points being uh, passed around in that case. And if your opponent can't deal with it, he'll pass, and that's fine. If he's passing into uh, f you know five or six cards into round two, you drop some points. If you have Ragnarug, you go for the long round. If you don't have Ragnarug, maybe you bleed. But Ragnarug is a card that is going to punish your opponent's decision to get out of a round because they can't deal with your engines and that's fine ragnarug in itself is a, is an engine in its you know in itself as well you're getting two points a turn you have enough movement in this with uh double dragoon and karen to make sure that your opponent will always be sitting in ragnarug if not they'll be lining up a fat row for a crushing trap and that's where i've had a lot of success is that you might not want to play ragnarug right away but it's always a good idea to throw Ragnarug on a, on a row that you know is going to see uh, some presence. And then once they're all done and said, you know, said and done, your crushing trap will uh, clean up the rest. And as that goes, your, uh, if, if, if everything goes to plan, they may have already ex uh, exhausted all their locks and hard removal on your, uh, on your matrons, on your Dolblathana sentries, on your hawker smugglers. They're not going to have enough for everything. Your fledglings as well. Those are going to be generating points based on the harmony mechanic so in which case it's always a good idea it's always a good idea to just let them remove stuff drop your engines you know that they're going to get removed but drop your engines and uh, if they can't answer them all you're going to win some rounds so uh, again the the basic idea of this entire deck uh, functions very similarly to what Ethne is supposed to be, which is uh, working up to bigger finishers like Sheldon and uh, Great Oak, but it also works to generate points via engine and overwhelm your opponent with passive point generation 
that they are going to eventually regret passing rounds into. Uh, Ragnarok is a big surprise for many people playing against Ethne. Usually those 12 points that you throw in there, people like to play those in, uh, into other cards, things like um, perhaps a Geralt, etc. But a Geralt that's worth 15 points is the same thing as a Ragnarug that ticks for eight turns uh, and you don't have to worry about picking and choosing your spots and when to play it. Some other people might say playing uh, something like a um, playing something like uh, a gnome, for instance, is a better option. Well, that depends on the meta. If your meta is very uh, control heavy, the gnome is not going to find enough targets to actually get maximized. In the same time, uh, in the same regard, playing Ragnarug uh, is is a good way to sort of get some passive point generation and and make it happen. And again, if you if they're not playing into Ragnarug, that's fine. If you notice that you're not uh, you're not getting much value on it, all that value that they're losing uh, in by not playing that you're losing by not them not playing into Ragnarug will all get cleaned up by a crushing trap on the opposite row. Uh, nonetheless, this is the uh, the deck that took me from rank zero to uh, sorry from rank one to rank zero. I think we we went like six and one with it uh, today on ranked, and that is good enough for me, man. So I was very happy with how this uh, how this performed in that rank, and now in pro rank we're going to see how it does. Uh, either way, we're going to go through the list again, and I hope that uh, this list uh, serves you well. But here we go. We've got two times Dwarven Agitator, two times Dryad Fledgling, two times Vryad Dragoon, two Broccolon Sentinels, two Dryad Matrons, two uh, Bothana Sentries. I have a Crushing Trap, two Hawker Smugglers, Milva, Kiaran, Triant Boar, Moren, Sheldon Skaggs, Gabor, Say Synthesis, Ithleen, Ragnarug, and Great Oak, all under the 18 provision umbrella of Ethne and her four devastating pings. This is Death Flow Pro, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it serves you well. So again, this is an Ethne list that has more passive point generation, more chip away damage, as you say. Uh, that can help you win the longer rounds. Uh, it does have some burst potential as well to punish short rounds as um, you know if that's the the game that they're playing. Be very mindful of what you're playing against. Make the changes that you need to. This today on you know Friday, January uh, June fourteenth was really good for me. Again, the meta shifts, everything changes, everything is in constant flux, so it might not be good for you tomorrow. I'm just telling you what worked for me on this particular day. Uh, play with uh, your opponent's win condition in mind and make the right choices and you too can succeed. This is Death Flow Pro, ladies and gentlemen. You can catch this deck in action. I play it on stream Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash watchflake. That's where it all goes down. And, uh, you know, leave your comments here on YouTube. Uh, give me the nice little subscription push on that button and it means the world to me. You can also join the Discord and catch me on Twitter at Watch Flake. Thank you so much. Be kind to one another. Love you all. I'll see you very soon. Adios.